Yeah, and that is from a, and from a berry plant. Yeah, and from yeah, the a berry. Yeah, it's a very good plant. 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 Yeah, okay. And you have to dry it. Okay, so the big plant, 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 Oké. Okay. En die neem je er mee als je het gaat gaan. Als je dan een maagprobleem hebt, oh, dat is maak je daar een beetje thee van. Thee van, oké. Okay. Oh, dus dat is niet van een dagelijks iets? Nee, dat is alleen nee, als nee, indien, nee. Uh, ja. zeg maar, als, als, als medicijn? Als medicijn ook, ja. Oké. Okay. Oh, ik ben Engelstalig. Oh, oké. Okay. Dus voor mij is dat een uh, no-brainer. Ja. Je bent aan het schrijven het opnemen. Mm -hmm. Nee. Dan hoef ik het niet op te schrijven. Ja, nee. I got the whole, uh, in case you need it. Okay, you guys, so because we might get rained out, I'm taking us to the best place possible that I found. And then, if um, it doesn't rain, we'll go back through some of the smaller stuff that I saw. Just in case. I can't pass this up because it's a really awesome little jewel. And it's this guy right here. I call this garlic mustard. Garlic without garlic. Yeah, so if you, the reason we use all five of our senses is because some things are really easy to identify with a sense other than sight. Often we rely on sight, but it's, it, with some plants it's not the best sense. So if you crush up one of the leaves of this plant, it smells like garlic, so here, try it. Maybe take a leaf, pass it around. Oh. Uh -huh. Garlic yeah. mustard. In the back? Yeah. So garlic mustard. It's part of the Brassica family. And the Brassica family is another huge family. I think next to the sunflower family, it's the largest family of plants. And plants that are in this family are broccoli, cabbage, kale, mustard. And all mustards, arugula, rocket. All mustards have a unique characteristic in the flower. Brassica. All mustards have four petals, so the flowers have four petals. Then if you look really closely, they have these seed pods that are long. And all mustards smell like mustard. So that's the most common identifying characteristic. If you take the plant and you smell it, it smells like either garlic or mustard, but you can de you can definitely tell what it is. John Kalis, the guy that my friend that wrote Wild Edibles from Dirt to Plates, he claims that wild mustard is the healthiest green that he is aware of. So, in his opinion, 
in mine too, I share this opinion. I believe that wild edibles are an awesome superfood. Sometimes people ask me, do you take supplements? I feel like I don't need to on a regular basis. You know, maybe if I'm traveling, it's nice to make an easy drink. But generally in my day-to-day -day life, my meal consists of superfoods. Do you eat everything on the Everything, yeah. So you chose the whole thing, so you? Yeah, yeah, totally. So you could try it? You can try it, yeah. First put it on my list. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this. Yeah. So, People are, are, are expressing concern about being in a park. Personally, I go to the cleanest place that I can, and it's easy where I'm from because there's mountains all around. Some people say, I, I can't eat from the city, it's not safe. And yet, many cities also have farms. Uh, often wheat gets grown right by the road, and we still eat the bread. So it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. What I recommend is that you always go to a place farther away from where people go. So maybe right here is not the best place to eat from because it's right on the path. But if I go there or like on a single track path, it's safer. If there's dogs in the area, maybe take some home and, and wash it. But I will tell you this, that greens help to clean crappy stuff out of our system including pesticides, herbicides, and other chemicals. There's a guy named Michael Greger. He's a doctor and he creates this DVD every single year. It's called The Latest in Clinical Nutrition. And Michael Greger, he knows how doctors talk and write, so he's able to read all these news articles. These, uh, they're not actually not news articles. They're clinical studies. Understand them and he puts them into terms that I understand. And in 2008, his DVD talked about how they did this study. They took kids from New York City and they tested them for chemicals. And they were shocked because they had DDT and all kinds of uh, formaldehydes in their system. They put them on a plant-based diet. They increased the amount of plants that they ate. Those che that chemical content dropped. They took them off a of plant-based diet. Those chemicals built up. So at a certain point, you got to realize we live in an unclean world, and we we just can't really control that. So Michael Gregard, yeah, G R A Greg, G R G R E G A R T. Whenever I go to a park, I try and head for the most unruly area because generally. Fewer people go there. Generally, it's overgrown with weeds, and the people that run the park won't mind me harvesting them because those weeds are probably weeds they don't want anyway. <laughs> so some people say, oh, you're going to harvest, why didn't we go to the herb garden? Well, because if 50 of us went to the herb garden, there'd be nothing left. Some people think, oh, well, you know, it's not okay to harvest plants. They're there to look at. Wild edibles are there to be enjoyed, and of course, you have to be cautious and you, in, in the sense that you don't want to go out and just pillage everything in, in sight. You want to treat it like your garden. But we shouldn't be afraid to harvest them either because every time we build a building or pave a parking lot, we do way more damage than any of us could ever do in a lifetime. That said, I always find the most unruly piece of land because it's overgrown by weeds, many of which are edible. And I find it, I treat it as like being patriotic. I'm, I'm helping this country because I'm eating the noxious weeds. And that's where we're headed next. We're headed to the most unruly part of the park. Uh -huh. Noxious weeds. weeds. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most parks are so well tended, but it's so nice in Netherlands. They don't, they leave wild things in America. They're gonna make a golf course out of it. Here, they like to leave it wild. I, well, I appreciate that. One of my favorite things about oh, Netherlands. Anybody? Oh, okay. It's just out, out of the general. What's up, <laughs> what I'm saying that I love about the Netherlands is how they leave me. 
I just couldn't pass this up because I found this awesome dandelion. So, interesting fact, dandelion flowers are completely edible. If you've never done so, put one in your mouth, try it, you'll find that it's really sweet. I take these, I put them in honey, and I let them sit there for three days. Or more, you can let them sit for six months. The honey preserves them, then you take that honey and you put it on whatever you want. If you eat raw food, raw food crackers, if you eat regular food, you put it on your pastry or your croissant, and you get wild, edible infused honey. So in the winter months, you're still getting that vitamin D that's concentrated in the flour in your meal. So I, I, a lot of times, because I live in a place where it gets cold and it snows, I will preserve wild edibles at their peak in order to eat them when it's cold. So that, that's detox? Is there a detox factor in the, in the dandelion flour? Detox factor? Yeah. Do they like detox your system? Uh, all greens all detox greens. your system, but they're also really good in salads. And yeah, yeah. You don't like get a headache or anything. If that's no, what okay. you're asking. So dandelion, there's over 300 different varieties. None that I know to be poisonous. There are many different things that look like dandelions. So it can be kind of tricky to tell a true dandelion, but dandelion has uh, no poisonous look-alikes that I'm aware of. So even if you miss, you know, if you think something is dandelion and it's not, chances are it's still edible. The way that you tell that it's a dandelion, a true dandelion from a uh, look-alike, is by the main stem. What do you feel when you feel it? Everybody take one, pass it around. Yeah, the whole plant is edible. I love it because I'm dispelling so many myths. So, you bite it, you know, and there's this white stuff that comes out, and people will say, that's not good. Where they got that, I have no idea. Maybe in a chemical lab, maybe there's a, a small amount of uh, toxins in it. But that white stuff actually stimulates bile production. It cleanses your inner organs, so it's literally good for your gallbladder, your kidneys, your uh, pancreas, every internal organ. And you, you actually... Have you ever heard about that exhibit, um, the human body or something like that? It's kind of controversial because they don't know where they get the bodies. Well, I went to see it and I had this amazing revelation that our organs, we really have one big organ, right? We call it the liver, but it's connected to everything else. We call it the pancreas, but it's connected to everything else. We literally have one big organ in us. And I had this big epiphany because I'm sitting there and I'm, when I'm compiling data, when I was compiling data for my wild edible iPhone app or my wild edible book, I started seeing a pattern. Every single wild edible had this long list of benefits and it was good for everything. And I was like, mm. people aren't going to believe me when I write this book. It's, how could, you know, because everybody wants that. I want this. What is the best for cancer? I, what, is, what is the best for diabetes and it's wild edible because our internal system 
you know, I don't think the body, when it was designed or made or whatever, they thought, whoever made us or whatever made us thought, this is the liver and this is the pancreas. They just made something that works. Yeah. And it's one, it's, it's one. Like, we are all one and everything is one. So, when you eat a piece of dandelion, it's good for your, all of your inner organs. And that white sap is not poisonous. We need to eat more bitters. But that's what we are kind of, uh, uh, we learn that bitter is poisonous. That's not true. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's what you learn. I mean, we learn that and it's, I think it's unfortunate. Bitters are cleansing. They make us salivate. We are not used to eating bitters because it's probably the least pleasant taste. And when they have to compete with donuts and pizza, it's like, all right, I won't screw the bitters. I want this good tasting stuff. That said, we still need them in our diet. We need to relearn how to like bitters. And a great way to do that is in green smoothies. Another great way to eat bitters is to blend dandelions with pine nuts and olive oil and make pesto out of them. Pesto. Wild edible pesto. You can use the leaves. The whole, I mean everything, but the whole plant. I generally just use the leaves. So dandelion leaves and stem. By the way, I don't differentiate leaves from the stem. I eat everything. Well, how I differentiate if something is hard and fibrous, which is what we're going to talk about with nettles, then I take that part out. If it's soft, if I can eat it, if I don't have to chew too much, I do it. So if, if I get a big fat dandelion stem and it's hard, I probably would eat the soft part. But otherwise, I blend the leaves with the stem. I don't do this. You know, that's, I'm just, no, I'm lazy. I don't want to do that. So, dandelion pesto. Dandelions, if you have a copy of my book Fresh, or if you Google dandelions with Sergey, you see a video where I, I talk about dandelions and I show you how to make the pesto. Our channel, write this down, Butenko Film. B-O-U-T-E-N-K-O Film. F-I-L-M-S. B-O- B-O-U T-E-N-K-O Film We have over 150 oh, videos on there And so I have lots and lots of free wild edible videos And we have lots of videos about smoothies and health and testimonies So subscribe to our channel, spread the word Because there's some really awesome information on there That I try very hard to share with people no, Very nice Thank you very, very much. Well, Who took my dandelion? Oh, here it is. No, somebody took it. I took it for... It got passed around. I just want to talk about the root real quick. Sometimes people ask, what about the root? My belief is that the greens and fruits of nature are the plant's gift to us. The roots are the way that the plant ensures its own survival. They're underground, they're hidden. Oftentimes when you pick a wild edible, one of its defense reflexes is that the root breaks off and stays in the ground. Like if you're picking wild onions, you pull the, the plant and the bulb is way down so that it doesn't come up. In fact, you have to dig really down to get the bulb. Because of this, I generally like to leave the roots in the ground. I, I want them to make more dandelions or more plants for other animals, not just humans, to enjoy. Also, roots are generally bitter. They take more preparation to make them taste good. And they're not as nutritious anyway. So my policy on roots is special occasions. <laughs> you know, it's, and dandelion roots, if you're a coffee drinker, um, dandelion is one of those plants that you cannot eradicate pretty much. If, you see a hundred dandelion plants and you take 99 of them, it's a true warrior because it'll come right back. Some plants are more sensitive, but you can take, uh, traditionally in the south of the U.S., they took dandelion root, they roasted it similar to coffee, and then they brewed a coffee-like substance, but it was caffeine-free and it was really good for your inner organs. So that's a possibility too. Wow. I return this. What is so special about the stem of a dandelion? You can find them everywhere. The stem of a dandelion carries nutrients to all parts of the 
the plant. So it's kind of the umbilical cord of the plant. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I didn't tell you. So if a stem is smooth, yeah. it's a true dandelion. Okay. If it has spikes or fuzzies, it's not a true dandelion, it's a look-alike. Again, there are, I'm not aware of any poisonous look-alikes. So smooth stem, yellow flower, look, it is a dandelion. Fuzzy stem, yellow flower, probably something else, but you can still eat it. Now let's talk about nettles and Mary stems. As foragers, we got to learn how to identify Mary stems. And Mary stems are the parts, essentially Mary stem is the growing part of a plant. Hey, Bob, are you still recording? So the growing part of a plant. A plant doesn't grow, all parts of the plant don't grow at once, right? When you look at a big nettle, it starts out from a tiny little plant. And at that point, the whole plant is a Mary stem because it has uh, a lot of sugars and carbohydrates in it that allow the cells to expand. The whole plant grows. But as it gets taller, if the whole plant grew, just fall over. So at a certain point, the meristematic part of the plant goes up and the rest of the part solidifies like a foundation of a skyscraper. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, the plant turns from being all meristematic to only certain parts being meristematic. So on this plant right here, the Mary stem is the very top. Mary stems, the growing parts of plants again, are easily identified because they're very flexible. What's the Dutch word for Mary stem? I don't know, but maybe just uh, the growing part of the plant. Okay. It's not always the top. In this case it's the top, but it's not always the top. So the growing part of the plant is going to be very flexible. It's often going to be lighter color. Sometimes, but not always, I, I would even say most times, but not always, it's going to have the most amount of nutrition. Because growing parts, just like growing kids, they need more nutrition. It's also going to have a higher good sugar content, so it's going to be more pleasant to eat. The reason we want to learn to identify what is the growing part is because we want to have fun. We don't want to just eat for nutrition. Eating for nutrition is boring. <laughs> and we were blessed with the gift of taste buds. At a certain point, you, I get tired of just thinking, is this the healthiest option? I, I want to enjoy myself. So, why would I want to eat the very bottom part of the nettles, which is firm and fibrous and rigid and not very tasty, maybe bitter, when I can eat nettles that taste good? So that's just something to think about. Mary stems, growing parts, um, lighter green color. Often the leaves are smaller. When a nettle plant is small, the whole plant is edible. Again, as it grows, look what happens. The leaves get really big. When leaves get really big, the thorns get bigger. The nutrition quality quantity goes down. So as the nettles plant grows, then I only harvest the top. And the way that I do this at home is very painless. I have a blender in one hand and I have scissors in the other hand and I just... <laughs> and I have a big patch of nettles thanks to my sister who grew wild edibles. That, you know, I just walk in my backyard in my shorts, cut them into my smoothie, then I drink it and I go on with my day in less than 10 minutes. How come that you don't uh, get uh, the itchy feeling when you don't cook it? I'm so glad that you guys are so ahead of me. Uh -huh. Nettle stings. If you hit yourself, ooh. When it stings us, we don't like that because we like it comfortable. So, interesting fact, in Russia, the elderly deliberately sting themselves when they have arthritis because whenever you're stung there, it increases oxygen and blood flow in that area. So if you get stung, maybe it's uncomfortable, but just remember that it's not bad for you. If you
you don't like the feeling of metal sting, all you have to do is juice or blend some of the nettles, apply it to where you were stung, and the sting will go away because the antidote to nettle sting is the juice. <laughs> so when you blend it or crush it or juice it, those that chemical compound that makes it sting gets neutralized. So when you blend it in a blender, no problem. So I take the tops, I blend it in blenders. If you you can put it in a soup, that's also really good. Nettles are very high in silica, which is good for our nails and our hair. Really good for iron. Helps people get over allergies. Nettles 